Well, again, good morning, Grace Lutheran Church and School, friends and neighbors. And back to our devotion on 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 9. It's the epistle for the second Sunday in Easter, and the title is Born Again to a Living Hope. We looked at verse 3 the last time we met, and so verse 3, which speaks to being born again, says, We're born again to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, and it's kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. Peter is speaking to us here in our current adversities, especially the pandemic of the coronavirus and all its effects of isolation and sickness and uncertainties and death but he's speaking in contrast. This is good news, and there's a lot of good news packed into this verse about our inheritance as a child of God. It's incorruptible, undefiled, and never fades away, and it's reserved for us in heaven. Many of us have received some important invitations, but the invitation of the gospel includes an eternal reservation in heaven. The fact that we all age, we all get sick, we all die means that we are infected with sin. And our current bodies are subjected to wear and tear and decay. Our bodies are corruptible now, but none of that applies to our resurrected soul or our resurrected body of glory. The requirement for undefiled inheritance begins in the Old Testament, and there the animals that were sacrificed had to be without defect because you cannot come into the presence of God no matter who you are if you're stained by sin. And of course, God always expects our best. So the atoning sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, he was the perfect lamb of God. He never sinned. He kept the law perfectly. And he is our sacrifice, our offering. And he removes that stain of sin for us and provides for us an undefiled inheritance. And his forgiveness is what paves the way to heaven. And the riches of heaven are our inheritance. It's springtime and it's a time of new birth. Yet even spring beauty fades. The lilacs breathe with fragrance, but like all flowers, they'll cease to bloom and then they're done. Our possessions require constant maintenance. Even the good ones cannot be sustained forever. The beauty of our youth, look at me, fades into old age. But Peter promises an unfading inheritance for those who remain faithful. To Christ. And those promises are guarded. Those promises of heaven are guarded by God's power through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed. Peter is giving us no ordinary picture of a military guard here. It is God who guards and protects us. So no matter how formidable the opposition battle's already won. Jesus said from the cross, it's finished. The tomb was empty on Easter. He was born again. He's resurrected. He's the first fruits of the tomb. And in Romans 8, 31, Paul tells us, if God is for us, who 
could possibly be against us. Peter says all this is through faith. Even faith, though, means that God is the surety of our creation. And it's God, the Holy Spirit, who creates faith who works faith, who strengthens faith, and who preserves saving faith through the means of grace. We call that the means of grace, God's word and his sacraments, which are nothing but the visible word of God. Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the word of God, for it is the power of God for salvation. 1 Peter 1.23, you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and the abiding word of God. Now, today we've looked at verse four and five and here verse five ends with a salvation that's ready to be revealed at the last time. We live by God the grace and mercy of God now. And we live now in the not yet, the not yet that is to be revealed to us in the last time. For many of us, our last time will be the last breath that we take, but it's the beginning of heaven. And the end of time will be the beginning of our resurrected glory that'll have no end. And for all this, we thank God that it's all under his control. So until we meet again, know I'm praying for you. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us this living hope. And we just wait with anticipation for you when you're going to come to us now in your word and your sacraments. And you're going to come again and with all the angels and claim us in heaven to a life of eternity with you. Until we meet again, we'll continue our look at 1 Peter 1, 3, verse 9. Peter now is the emboldened disciple, equipped and full of the Holy Spirit. He is a apostle of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.